Hello, my dear friends. I'm Dr. Vaishali Bharande. I've been teaching anatomy for more than 25 years and I love it. I found that there is a distance between the, the door of anatomy department and the door of the surgery department. And this is the surgical anatomy. And many a times, that additional knowledge would make it very easy for students to seamlessly begin to understand surgery. The same is applicable to those early uh, students who are in uh, who have just entered surgery, ENT, ophthalmology for specialization. All of them need a quick brush up on the surgical anatomy of the anatomy that they learned in their earlier years. So today, I have started out a surgical anatomy series, out of which coenoid segments of liver are what we are going to be discussing today. The notes of all these lectures are available on my website vbanatomy.com. In case you like the lecture, okay, and you feel like accessing these notes in the form of handouts, you can find them on my uh, VB Anatomy website. And if you like this lecture, do remember to like and subscribe. It will help me to understand whether I am really helping you and whether these informative lectures are really needed. And let's begin. Today, we are going to discuss coenoid segments for which we will approach the liver from behind, understand the posterior surface, inferior vena cava, hepatic veins draining into the inferior vena cava, how hepatic veins divide the liver into physiological loads, then hemi livers, then sectors, and then finally the coenoids segments. That's how we will go about this discussion. Let's now look at the liver from behind, bound by superior border, inferior border. And this here in the middle of posterior surface is your inferior vena cava, which is where I want you to come. So this is your inferior vena cava. When you remove it, you find that hepatic veins were draining into it such that there are upper set and a lower set. The upper set consists of right, middle and left. Right, middle and left hepatic veins. The lower set consists of a little variation, few veins on the left and one on the right. All these drain directly into the inferior vena cava. Imagine yourself as the liver might help you. I usually put myself in the place of inferior vena cava. Okay, whatever rocks your boat, isn't it? Right. So that's the right hepatic vein, that's the middle hepatic vein, that's the left hepatic vein. Now this is dissected out liver with the hepatic veins clearly visible. You will find that there is a main portal fissure which is occupied by the middle hepatic vein which divides your liver into right and left hemi livers. If you, the liver is non-dissected, you could draw this line from gallbladder fossa to the inferior vena cava and back. This is called as the Cantilis line or the cholecystocaval line. Cholecystocaval line. So now the liver is divided into right and left hemi livers. Now a right portal fissure represented by the right hepatic vein draining into inferior vena cava helps to divide the right hemi liver into right anterior and the right posterior. Okay. Similarly, this is right anterior, this is right posterior. Similarly, a left portal fissure helps to divide your left lobe into left medial and left lateral. A lot of people have difference of opinion who divides the left lobe. Is it the umbilical fissure or is it the left portal vein, left hepatic vein? So finally here, what is umbilical fissure? This is the umbilical fissure where the uh, left umbilical vein was entering into the liver. Finally remaining behind is the ligamentum teres hepatis. You saw how the liver is made up of two physiological lobes, right and left, by the middle hepatic vein. It was then the right was divided into two sectors by the right hepatic vein. Left was divided into two sectors by the left hepatic. Finally, each of these was divided into segments. With this, we come to what did Coenot do? Coenot divided the liver into eight functional segments based on distribution of portal veins and hepatic veins, such that each segment has its own vascular inflow through hepatic artery portal vein, vascular outflow through hepatic veins, and bile drainage through bile duct. So take a look here, you can see 
hepatic arteries, hepatic veins and bile forming one single functional unit. Principle is that it is possible to segmentally reject a part of the liver preserving the function of other segments. So with this we come to what is the basis for subdivision of whole node segments. Understand that this subdivision is a sector, vertical sector, horizontal. It's like a grid. So the vertical subdivisions are by hepatic veins. The horizontal subdivision is by the portal vein. Okay. Let's take it further. So this is the liver. Coenod labeled the segments, the caudate lobe being labeled as one, and the, all the others are going in a clockwise manner. So this is one caudate lobe, two, three. Two is left lateral superior, three is left lateral inferior. This is four, which is further subdivided by into four A and four B. This is left medial. Five and six are right anterior. So right anterior inferior, right anterior superior. 6 and 7 are right posterior. So right posterior inferior, right posterior superior. So this horizontal line that you are seeing is probably where the portal vein spits out. Okay, and these vertical sectors that you are seeing is probably where the inferior hepatic veins are found. Okay, so note that segment 1 lies posterior between the left lobe of liver and the inferior vena cava. Segment 2, 4, 8, 7 above portal vein. Segment 3, 4b, 5, 6, 7 below portal vein. Very confusing. Let's take a look. So, if you were to look at these images, from if you go from above, you will see few segments. If you go from below, you will see different segments because they are divided into superior and inferior. If you go from anterior, you will not see segment 1 at all. So, the segmentation has to be understood in its three dimension, not in the single diagram. This is segmental anatomy of liver. Let's take a section of the liver at a higher level. At this level, what will I see? I will see 7, 8, I will see bit of 1, I will see 4 and maybe 2. Exactly what we are seeing in the section. Now, let's take a lower section, a little lower than that. At this level, I will see 7, 8, yes, 1, 4a or 4b depending on how the section goes and a bit of 2 and 3. If I go lower, I may not see the top lobes at all. I may say either 6 or 5, I may see either 5 or 8, I will see 1 and then 4b and 3, I won't see 2. So you have to understand the three dimensional sections of liver to be able to truly understand the segmental anatomy. What did we learn here? We learned that liver is divided into right and left physiological lobes by the middle hepatic vein Cantonese line. Each lobe was divided into sectors right anterior, right posterior on the right, medial and lateral on the left. Each sector was subdivided into a total of eight segments such that one, two, three, four are on the left, 5, 6, 7, 8 are on the right. One actually is considered an independent entity. So let's quickly take a look at hepatic veins. What do they drain? The right hepatic vein drains adjacent sides of 6, 7, 5, 8. Middle hepatic vein drains adjacent sides of 5, 8, 4A, 4B. The left hepatic vein drains 2, 3 and 4A, 4B. Spigelian veins drain segment 1 directly into the inferior vena cava. That's the story behind hepatic veins. Remember, there will be variations. This is just one of the references. There are so many publications on this. What about portal vein? As the portal vein enters in through the porta hepatis, it divides into a right portal vein and a left portal vein. Left is a little higher than the right. The right portal vein then divides into right lateral sector and a right medial sectoral vein. So right lateral sectoral obviously supplies 6 and 7. Right medial sectoral supplies the 5 and 8. You can see both branches supplying 1. Okay, And left goes on to supply 2, 3 and 4. That's the distribution of portal vein inside the liver. What is the importance of talking about all this? Coinot decided to divide hepatic segments. Why discuss it? 
See, this segmental discussion, the segmentation helps in resections in the liver, transplantation of the liver, treatment of diseases. It allows surgeons to plan procedures with specific segments with minimal damage to the rest of the liver function. By dividing the liver based on functional anatomy rather than external landmarks, Coinot classification provides a more precise way of hepatic surgery, leading to better outcomes, reducing the risk of complications. So with this, we complete the, our uh, lecture on Coinot segments. I hope you enjoyed this lecture. I hope you learned a lot. This is a very commonly asked question nowadays, even in first MBBS, in third MBBS, and of course in your surgery years. So prepare it well. Access the MCQs, access the uh, notes on the website. And if you like the lecture, do like and subscribe to my channel. It will encourage me to create more of these educational videos for all of you. Thank you. I'll see you across in my next surgical anatomy lecture. Bye.